What's up guys? File from Cannibal Corpse 1996. What a record. Today we're going to be focusing on that. What to say about this seminal album that came out in 1996 that sees Chris Barnes going out of the band and eventually forming Six Feet Thunder. Another person from Monstrosity came on board and he was uh, George Fisher, Corpse Grinder, his pseudonym, nickname. Devout by Vermin is the first track, followed by a Mummified in a Barbed Wire, and then the rest is history. Fast paced, guttural sounds, the voice is just great, very dynamic. I've always considered George Fisher being much better than uh, his predecessor in terms of techniques, passion, in terms of voice and presence on stage that was and to this day is still something that nobody can equal in the genre. Obviously Cannibal Corpse is by far the most influential, the most uh, severe <laughs> and the most uh, violent when it comes to sounds and aggression and lyrics. The album for me is very special and important because it was given to me back in 1998 by a friend. At the beginning when I started to listen to this album, the first time it was shocking. I was like, how on earth four or five people can produce such a, an aggression in sound. I remember I was with one of my friends putting it, putting the CD on the stereo and then listening to it. I think we listened to about two or three tracks and that was <laughs> okay for the beginning. And I told myself, oh my goodness, what did I put myself into? However, my friend was a little bit skeptical, whereas I was very intrigued by it. And that was probably the day when I never went back to <laughs> anything else that I was listening before. This is when I started to be serious into death metal and I started to have an idea of what death metal in general was all about. I fell in love with it. Monstrosity actually was uh, the second band I listened to, which at the beginning sounded to me very similar to Cannibal Corpse because obviously my ears were not used to it, but then obviously you realize how different the two bands are with a bit of training <laughs> and a bit of practice in the genre. So a long time ago, as you can see, I fell in love with this um, great band. I saw them a few times. The last time I saw them was a while ago in London. And the concert was absolutely great. Rob Barrett, who is the one who recorded Vile, was back in the lineup and the concert that lasted a couple of hours was one of the best I've ever watched because the intensity and the passion as I said and the energy that the band can produce is unequal and unrivaled. A band that definitely has to be seen live. Although the albums obviously are one better than the other ones, especially the first ones. I like the albums with Chris Barnes as well. So the first three, uh, Tomb of the Mutilated, uh, The Bleeding, and I Butchered a Birth, which I believe was an EP. EP. Uh, great albums, but then the additional uh, Corpse Grinder was uh, basically the cherry on the pie. That was what uh, really Cannibal Corpse needed. A bit of more energy and aggression, especially when it came to the live uh, performances. Give it a go. And this is a real must. Obviously, be cautious because there's nothing to do with uh, any other um, sort of heavy metal or rock in general. It's something very abrasive, something that <laughs> catches you like a knife. But. I would definitely give it a go, just to be curious and see what everything is all about. For those of you who don't know about much about death metal, uh, you might want to start 
perhaps with something a little bit more melodic. Uh, remember there was a, a genre in Sweden back in the days that was called Swedish death metal, which for the purest of the death metal fans, the melodic death metal was a little bit of a oxymoron, a bit of a contradiction. Uh, death metal can be melodic. But these bands added something very good to a fresh sounds that was at times a little bit more extreme, but the riffs and the solos and sometimes the voice, which was a little bit more melodic than, than uh, the American death metal that we have been talking about, especially Cannibal Corpse, who are the ones who stand out, although there are other great bands like Daysides or uh, Obituary, uh, Morbid Angel, uh, another seminal band, but we'll be talking about them in due course. Without further ado, go and listen to this uh, apocalyptic album, <laughs> record. There's uh, Cherry on the Pie, something that the late 90s really needed. And by this additional member of the band that gave rise to the extremity of this genre definitely give it a go because uh, this uh, genre is something that has to be discovered piece by piece for those of who who are not that extremists <laughs> like me <laughs> um, I wouldn't recommend this album to start with but obviously if you want to have that kind of curiosity and see what I'm talking about, then go for it. Why not? Devout by Vermin is the opener of the album and then the rest is history. I won't um, add anything else to what I've been saying already, but then the album will speak for itself. Okay, from there you've got 15 albums to discover. Start with that, which I think is the, the gateway to this formidable or formidable band that accompanied me throughout the years. And whenever I think about them, I always think about them with a smile because they've covered lots of moments in my life. I think about those lyrics, those extremities in the covers, uh, the performances on stage by Corpse Grinder especially are something very wild. Just look for it, YouTube it and then you'll see what I'm talking about. The other members of the band, they're also seminal. Paul Mazurkiewicz, I think, Mazurkiewicz, Mazurkiewicz, I can't remember how you pronounce it but anyway, Paul is the drummer. However, Rob Barrett, who was the lead guitarist back in the days that then left the band but then rejoined in 2006. Alex Webster, the great bass player. Very technical, highly hyper technical. Just see what I'm talking about when you listen to the album. And then Jack Owen, the then a uh, few years after left the band as well to join I believe Six Feet Thunder but I'm pretty much sure that he played with Dayside as well for a few years. Am I leaving anyone? And obviously I've already been talking about quite a lot about the great performer who in this case is the lead singer or screamer or roarer or growler, call it as you want. Okay, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and support me uh, as you might want to help me grow my channel and with all my support and hugs and love, I'm just going to say good night to you because here is quite late at night, although it doesn't look like because here is very, looks like um, it is in the morning because <laughs> there's so much light going on, but yes. I think I'm gonna go to sleep soon. But this was my um, final thought for the day and I was thinking about this great record uh, that deserves my attention. Therefore, he had to be 
somehow reviewed but again it doesn't really need too much reviews it just needs to be listened to okay have a great listening and see you soon don't forget to subscribe bye bye